It is true that to some degree, ignorance is bliss. At the moment, I do not feel ignorant and I do not feel blissful. Now that I know what I know, I also know what I don't know and I feel my practical work on the ground still sucks big time. And if I let this perception turn into frustration, then it will be the sure sign that I have dropped out of the present moment, that I have let all thoughts intrude, that I am no longer flowing, grumble, grumble. While I was in the process of writing each of my novels, I would joke that I had a muse hovering above my left shoulder as I sat at the keyboard. How else would I have come up with seven novels in three years and the luminous or evocative language appreciated by readers that surprises even me, I who had never ever thought of writing anything. These days I know I have a muse and my muse is my soul and my muse is the one who is guiding my thoughts on spiritual right. The main stumbling blocks of my spiritual evolution are finite words, lazy thinking and the lack of awareness that my ego persona leads me by the nose as easily as the farmer leads his cow by the nose ring, that and my Western education. Imagine a maze of labyrinthine proportions. Imagine it white, imagine darkness all around it. Now half a meter into the maze, imagine a tiny white mouse. The little white mouse knows it twitching, scoodles through and around a few sections until she hits a dead end. The little white mouse scoots back to the nearest opening and trots off seemingly unperturbed in another direction altogether. This mouse is actually quite a clever little mouse. There are some, you see, that would keep trying to get through the same passageway again and again, so sure that the piece of cheese is right there on the other side, but they get zapped again and again and again. But our clever little mouse, luck is on her side. With a clean run ahead, she puts a wriggle in her wiggle. She has things to do, places to see, and she senses that the piece of yummy cheese is within her reach. Woo! Oh, ouch. Just as she thought that she had nailed this, zap. A little shock on the tip of her pink nose makes her whiskers twitch. She sits on her haunches, shakes her head a couple of times, scratches behind an ear, and off she trots again, but in another direction altogether. Like the ball in a pinball machine, totally random, bouncing off stimuli to deterrence, the little mouse keeps going. The blind little mouse that she is. She cannot guess which direction of her labyrinth will take her on the long and happy run to the nice bit of cheese, nor can she anticipate which turn will lead her to yet another dead end, or worse, another electric shock that will zap the tip of her little pink nose. After all, our clever little mouse is no more enlightened than all the others. The way I see it these days, the cause of our miseries is not so much the sequence of dead ends inherent to the karmic maze we have been dropped into pre-birth, little mice that we are. I accept that the cause resides in our ego persona that has learned from the dawn of time to follow her nose, her conditioned lust for life and her creature comforts which include, unlike all other creatures, her need to crave and hoard more than she needs, yet seldom feels she has enough, as well as a damning caution to sift present through the tight mesh of her memory. Every time we have an itch, you see our first impulse is to scratch it, literally or figuratively, to indulge it. This works well for our pets and for all other animals, but we humans need to know that emotional itches should not be scratched any more than physical ones, otherwise the bites never cease to itch. They get puffy infected, creating the extra side effects that keep us in our blind mouse ways, disconnected from our soul and oblivious to the added dots of unhelpful karma that connect in our energy field. Sure, my soul is looking down the barrel of an ongoing cycle of incarnations, along with most of the souls currently incarnated, which, for our souls, amounts to nothing less than endless string of lifespans spent in captivity with a disoriented sort of feeling, even though in the eternal spiritual realm, lifetimes are over and done with in the blink of an eye.